All right, so in this video, we are going to be deriving the D4H point group. And we always start off with an example molecule. Uh, here could be any square planar uh, molecule. It could be xenon tetrafluoride, it could be tetrachloroplatinate anion. Um, there's a lot of different square planar molecules out there, but the square, uh, just a planar two dimensional square, is the simplest example of a D4H point group. So that's a good place to start. And then we just come up with all the different uh, symmetry operations for that point group. And so um, we have here <clears throat> identity. We always have the identity as an operation. I'm using the hat notation to um, represent that these are operations. Later, we'll drop the hat uh, notation once we start grouping the various operations into classes. As you can see from this diagram, uh, we have a C4, that's a 90 degree rotation, um, you know, going through that square, right, square right here. So we can take this atom and it goes into that atom, this atom goes into that atom, that's a C4. <clears throat> and of course we can do a C4 twice. If we do a C4 twice, um, that is gonna be equal to a C2. So that's a unique operation. And then we could do a C4 uh, three times as well along that axis. I'm mean, thinking about that as our principal rotation axis later on in this video. Uh, we define the principal rotation axis, our highest order n, as the z-axis. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, perpendicular C2s, where of course we're a D point group. Um, and so this means we have always n perpendicular C2s. Um, and we're a D4 group, so we're going to have four, because n equals four, four perpendicular C2s. Um, and two of those C2s are going to look like this, and two of the C2s are going to look like this. Um, and so the way that that works is that these two um, run through the bonds, okay? Um, and so we could call that, we could call those uh, C2 prime. The reason why we're going to call them C2 primes, we'll call them C2 prime uh, A maybe, um, and I'll call this C2 prime B, okay, going through this bond and this bond. Doesn't matter which one is which, but those are operations. And we're going to call those C2 primes to differentiate from this C2, which is just um, a 180 degrees spinning the square like this way from this atom to this atom or this atom to this atom. These C2s are flipping things like this, right? In the X or the Y direction. And so if we go along this C2, it's taking this atom all the way to this atom, flipping it like that, okay? Spinning it like that. Here, we're again doing 180, uh, 180 degree rotation, but you can see that they're different. They're going, uh, in between bisecting the, uh, the bonds, angle formed by the bonds. So we'll call those C2 double primes. C2 double prime A and C2 double prime B. Um, beyond that, we also have a, a horizontal mirror plane. We can start looking for mirror planes. And so um, this mirror plane is called a horizontal mirror plane, uh, sigma H, because it is going through the plane of the molecule and that is perpendicular or horizontal to the principal rotation axis, this C4, right? Um, so that's the definition of a horizontal mirror plane that's perpendicular to the principal rotation axis. So we have one of those. Um, and then we also have uh, sigma, two sigma Vs um, and uh, sigma uh, Ds as well. So the sigma Vs, we call the ones that are going, um, that are going through the bonds. So we have these, these ones in orange here, sigma V prime, we can call them, and sigma V double prime, right? So this mirror plane coming out towards us, we take this atom, go to that atom, this mirror plane going across, it's cutting through the molecule, so it takes this going to this, 
Those are vertical mirror planes because they cut through the bonds. Um, and then we also have sigma Ds, uh, which are these yellow ones. So I have sigma D prime, we can call it, and sigma D double prime. Um, and those are a little different. But those, so this one here is going to take this atom, go to that atom, this atom, this atom. All the mirror planes go through the center. So it doesn't do anything to the central atom. Uh, and then we can think about combining some of these um, attributes, some of these uh, symmetry operations, doing them in succession to get new unique operations. So one of those is the inversion operation. Well, that's actually the same thing, I have a video on that, but that's the same thing as saying um, a C2Z, okay, so this way 180 degrees, followed by sigma H. But we definitely have an inversion center here in this molecule because our inversion, the definition is that we take X, Y, Z, any arbitrary point, and we go to negative X, negative Y, negative Z. And so here we're checking that if we do that at any point, do we get back the same atom? Um, and a, a way conceptually to think about this is we're taking you know, something at the top of the molecule, right of the molecule, the front of the molecule to the opposite. So top right front, something like top right front, will go to the back uh, left, would, would go to the bottom left back. Okay, top right front, bottom left back. Those are opposites. So you can see here, left of the molecule, if we go to the right of the molecule, we got back that same green atom, whatever that may be. Here we got front of the molecule, it goes to the back of the molecule, we've got that same green atom. So we do have an inversion center. Well, we didn't even have to really come up with that if you remember this definition of inversion, which is a C2Z, right? Principal rotation axis followed by a sigma H. We know we have a C2, we already figured that out, and we have a sigma H, so therefore we must have an inversion. That's another way of doing it. Um, and we can also find, combine the sigma H with C4. So um, we have an S4, that's, that's the definition of an improper rotation, an S4. Um, this, by the way, inversion is also equal to an S2. Um, but people call it inversion. So we have a C4 followed by sigma H. Um, and so that's going to be a 90 degree, 90 degree rotation followed by a flip um, through the horizontal mirror plane. So be taking this to this, for example, 90 degrees, and then doing a sigma H. Well, sigma H doesn't really do anything in a planar molecule. Um, so it's going to stay there. And we also have an S43, which is a C. <clears throat> Uh, for three times followed by a sigma H. Okay, so now I just have to group these into classes. And so I'm gonna do that with a different color here. Identity is, is always in its own class. So we'll call that E, dropping the hat notation. Inversions, always in its own class. So we'll call that I, dropping the hat rotation notation. And then we have um, a C4 and a C4-3, and those are gonna be in the same class. We're gonna put that as those two operations in the same class, two C4. The reason why those are both uh, principal rotation operations in the same class is because if you think about it, if you do a 90 degree rotation this way or 90 degree rotation that way, that's the same thing as doing a 270 degree rotation a C4 three times um, in the other way. So for example, if we went from here to here, that's a 90 degree rotation, brought from that atom to that atom. But if in the other direction, we did 270 degree rotation, we get the same thing. So these C4 and C4-3s are mathematically very similar, and that's why they go into the same class. The C2, however, is different, right? The C2 is doing 180 degree rotation. Um, and so that's going to be uh, in its own class. So we'll circle that one. And we'll call that the C2 class, dropping the hat notation, because now we're talking about a class and not an, op not an operation. Um, the two C2 primes, those are similar in that they go through the atoms. Um, and so we'll call those two C2s. Um, the C2 double primes are similar mathematically in that they bisect uh, the angles formed by the atom. <clears throat> so we'll call those um, sorry, we should call these C2 primed just to distinguish it from the C2. We'll call that without a prime. We'll call this C2, 2C2 double prime, these two operations. And then we have a sigma H. Um, and so 
uh, that, or we'll drop the hat notation, sorry. That is in its own class. We have the two sigma v's. Those are both vertical mirror planes. So mathematically, they're very similar. Same thing with the two sigma d's. And then lastly, we have both of these improper rotation um, uh, 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 axes. And so that's going to be the two s4. Uh, and they're then the same operation for a very similar reason that the C4 and the C4-3 operations were in the same uh, uh, class. So at this point, we figured out that we have, um, we have 10 different classes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and that furthermore, we have a total of what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different uh, operations. And so with those different classes, those 10 different classes, then we're gonna be able to, in the next video, figure out how to um, group them into irreducible uh, representations and that'll help us drive the character table.